Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to go over what I consider to be the most criminally underrated kayak on the market today. I'm doing this in a series alongside Wendell Fishing on his channel and Jameson Redding on his channel. Today, after I reveal the kayak, obviously, I'm gonna go over a little bit about the company, why I think this is a tremendous value, and also, finally, why I think you may be entitled to some hard time for underestimating this kayak. All that and a lot more. Let's get right into it, guys. Okay, so the most criminally underrated kayak on the market today, in my opinion, is the New Canoe Flint. Now that may surprise some people out there. Uh, you know, so for some videos that I've done in the past, I enjoy New Canoe platform a lot. I love the Unlimited. I owned an Unlimited and a Frontier both. But when I'm talking about underrated, I'm you know we all know how great the Unlimited is. We all know how great the Frontier was. This here is something. This is a kayak that a lot of people underestimate a lot of people discount because they're looking at that high range but what do you get with a new canoe flint so new canoe a little bit about them uh, they were formed by tim nehemiah i hope i'm saying that right he was uh, the former founder of ocean kayak so a lot of people are probably familiar with that company him and blake young started new canoe with a vision of a do-it-all platform hunting fishing, and they've really knocked it out of the park with their overall lineup, and especially with some improvements they've done over the years as well. But uh, the New Canoe Flint is really gonna be one of those kayaks that's designed for skinnier water, rivers, creeks, also calm flat water like lakes, ponds, anything like that. It's a great throw and go option. And I've said many, many times that I really feel like the industry is starting to shift a little bit more toward that throw and go kayak. You know, a lot of people have gone on and bought the large, heavy lake fishing kayaks, and there's definitely a place for those. I personally love those platforms, but sometimes you just wanna go down to the local creek or river and have something you can just throw in the back of a truck or car top really easily, and you get that with the Flint. So the Flint has a lot of different options with propulsion, with handling. It's a very maneuverable, fast paddling kayak. It's lightweight, so it's under that 70 pound range. I believe it is 60, 63 pounds. So that's really, really light for an 11 foot kayak. But you get a robust weight capacity. You get a lot of features with this. Get a really comfortable seat that trims forward and backward. That is big when you're talking about multiple bodies of water. If you're on uh, calm water, having it more toward the middle is gonna level that boat out. It's gonna track really well, which one of the strengths of the Flint is the tracking, straight line paddling, and then there's the speed. And you can tell the speed really by looking at it the way it's built. But it's also, it's pretty stable. It's not gonna be as stable, of course, as a Frontier or an Unlimited, but it's stable enough. And with the, what you give up a little bit in the stability, you're getting in that handling and speed. And when I'm talking about speed, I'm talking about efficiency. I'm talking about not doing a ton of work to get to where you want to go. So what you get with the Flint also is a ton of different rigging options. You get the flush mount rod holders in the back. You've got four of them back there. You've got plenty of room for a Black Pack Pro. You've got plenty of room in the front. Also the gear pod, a lot of people don't know that the gear pod for the Unlimited also fits the Flint. So if you wanted to put a little bit more of a, an enclosed storage, you can add that to the Flint as well as different options for Anchor Wizards. They sell an Anchor Wizard plate that goes on the front of it. So it's a great do-it-all fishing kayak. One of the few things that this kayak won't do, it's not gonna fix you a sandwich in the morning when you're going out fishing, but it is gonna get you to those spots and not wear you out. It's not gonna wear you out loading it and unloading it. Hey, not everybody needs a Frontier or an Unlimited, and a lot of people have enjoyed the versatility that the Flint gives them. So I'm gonna go over a couple of features. I'm not gonna spend a tremendous amount of time on them because I have done a video on that already. I'll link that up in the, uh, in the corner here as well as put a link in the description if you wanna check out a more detailed review of this kayak. But we're gonna go over this a little bit more. Okay, so going real quick, a little bit more in depth on this kayak. So really, really nice entry point. It's got that really, really sharp keel. This is actually a customer's kayak that I had to borrow because we're just currently sold out of these kayaks. We live in a really feature rich environment for creeks, for rivers. We have Buffalo National River, which is the nation's first 
National River. Uh, we got large lakes. There's a lot of areas around here where a creek fishing kayak will do really well. So one thing that I love about a creek fishing kayak and a river kayak is horizontal rod storage. You do have along the gunnels, the ability to store your rod tips and these little tip protectors on the nose. You can run them along the gunnels here. Uh, going down here, this customer has put the deck completion kit. So it does come with deck padding in the middle, but you also can add to it with, uh, through New Canoe with their deck completion kit, additional padding on the front. And he's also added some on the back there. That's really nice if uh, this customer specifically has a dog they like to take with them a lot. And then the dog lays up front here and it's also, it's keeping them quiet, it's comfortable. It's a non-slip surface as well if you like to stand up and fish from it. The Flint is not as stable as the Frontier or the Unlimited course, but those are really huge kayaks. But with this one here, you get a very nimble kayak. This thing's gonna turn on a dime. It's gonna paddle really quickly. Um, some people can stand up in them. It just depends on what your balance is, what, how good your sea legs are, and how comfortable you are doing that. Here in the front nose here, you do have the, uh, a place for your catch board. That's also a really nice feature as well. You got the little strap that holds it in place. Of course, made in the USA, which is a big, big deal to a lot of people, myself included. Moving back here, you've got place where you can put your transducer if you want to run a depth finder. You've got the little gear track here in the middle where you can mount that on the floor, have your little display there. And your footrest, you do have these little, these little molded notches there to give your feet somewhere to go there if you're really wanting to kind of bear down on paddling. Tackle storage here on the sides with this little rubberized grip. And then one thing I do like, and I feel like it's skimmed over a lot on this kayak, is the side handles. So the side handles double as paddle clips, a little taco clip where you can snap your paddle into the side of that. You can see the recessed area here on the sides. That's gonna hold that paddle really nicely. You also got the notches here on the gunnels if you just wanna set it down really quickly, kind of throw in a spot before you move on. The seat, again, it's that Millennium seat. It does not swivel. You can add the swivel functionality. The only thing that I would caution about that is you really, you're really gonna affect your stability raising that seat anymore. So if you're already kind of feeling a little tippy on this, that's definitely not gonna help that out. All right, so moving to the back, this is where the features really start to come out and the uniqueness of this kayak is gonna really kind of separate itself in my opinion. Moving, you know, huge, huge area here. So this is great for a battery and I'll get into those in a minute. Uh, great place for a Black Pack Pro. Uh, Black Pack, you, you know, Yak Attack used to make a Black Pack specifically for the New Canoe series where it had the, the tensioned hinges where it wasn't just that plastic flap slamming up and down. But the Black Pack Pro will fit in here perfectly. You can put a 16 by 16 in here, but you're really gonna like the 13 by 16 a little bit better in this kayak, I feel. Four flesh mount rod holders in addition to the horizontal rod storage you have in the front. And then you have an access hatch. So access hatch is gonna be really great if you're, if you're installing any kind of electronics, you wanna run any kind of wiring through the boat. Also just for small storage, you wanna stuff a dry bag in there or something. So the biggest thing here is the flat transom. So again, I was talking about a lot of things that this kayak will do. Do you wanna pedal drive your kayak? The Flint does it. Do you wanna put a motor on the back of your kayak? It does that too. Do you want a good paddling, quick, efficient throw and go option, it'll do that too. <laughs> this kayak's definitely gonna do all three of those. So there's a lot of different motorization options. Uh, New Canoe actually has their own specific propulsion system, or you can do uh, a little bit more price and budget friendly options because again, a lot of those cheaper trolling motors, in, you know, 36 to 55 pound thrust, you can just clamp onto the back of that and they sell a motor mount that just, it's, a, it's basically two plates that clamp onto the back of that to give you even more rigidity to clamp those motors on. So really, you can do a lot of different things with this kayak. You can run your electronics on it. You can run a motor on it. You have your own propulsion for pedal drive on it that mounts onto the track with New Canoe's pivot drive. You can do a lot of different things. You're not bound by just a paddling kayak. And if you're like me, if you're on the rivers and creeks and you wanna keep it simple, which is great for river fishing, You've got it already. So New Canoe did announce that this boat is gonna be $100 less 
less than it was the previous year. So it used to be $1,199, it's now $1,099. And this boat, again, competes really well with a lot of boats in that price range for what you get with the weight capacity, the functionality, the rigging options, the seat, all of that stuff for $1,099. You get new canoes, free parts for life, and really a hassle-free warranty, a great company, and just a phenomenal boat. If I think this is one of the most underrated values, it's criminal to undervalue this kayak or underestimate this kayak. I think this is gonna be, for a long period of time, one of the best things out there. And New Canoe is one of those companies that likes to push the envelope. They're gonna be coming out with new things, new ways to rig it, new ways to do things. You talked about the gear pod on the front. That's a really big feature, especially if you're wanting to run any kind of electronics. You can store everything in that pod, uh, mount it on top of that, and you can remove it. It's got handles on the bottom of it. So again, what do you think about the Flint? Let me know. So I'm gonna do uh, links up here. Up here, you're gonna have Wendell doing the pedal drive kayak. And then over here, you're gonna have Jameson doing an inflatable kayak and why you should consider that as well. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Check out the other two videos in the series. I'll have them up here and then link down in the description. But as always, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you on the next one.